Welcome back to another episode of Wednesday Night Smack Talk. And we are here on episode 230 of Wednesday Night Smack Talk. Now, last week on 229, we predicted TBD Presents Extreme Rules. And this week, we go over the results for Extreme Rules. Then after that, I will explain what will be happening in the upcoming weeks. Because, a little teaser here, between WWE and AEW, there are three premium live events slash pay-per-views, whichever one, whatever you want to call them, in November. <laughs> so, got a lot of predicting to do in this next uh, couple of weeks. So, yeah. But I'll explain that later on. Right now, I have to reveal to you who won at Extreme Rules, or TBD Presents Extreme Rules. It's very clear that I have to say TBD Presents Extreme Rules. So, without any further ado, let's get into our first match that we're going to review here. And that is the Tag Team Championship match, the Golden Gods, versus the Sigma Academy. Now, we do have a winner here. It's not a tie. I'll, I'll reveal that right now. No tie here in this Tag Team Championship match. We will either have your retaining Tag Team Champions or new Tag Team Champions. And let's find out which is which. Because you see, I, Kang, did the best out of everybody in this match. I went five and one. Only getting one match wrong. My tag team partner, Joe, went three and three. That's how it is. I could have easily gone three and three. Joe took a lot of the bullets. Uh, we'll have to see if it worked out for us. But he didn't have a great record. They could win if they both go four and two, which Zach, in fact, did. Zach went four and two, which, of course, means... Sebi, it's all on you, my friend. And Sebi... With it all on the line, all focused on him, went two and four, which, as of right now, is the worst record on the show. Of course, it's only four people, so it's not that big of a deal yet. We'll have to wait and see, but the Golden Gods go eight and four. The Sigma Academy, six and six, a little spooky. One more, and you got a great number there. The Golden Gods win by two. Pretty easy win for the Golden Gods. And now it's time for one half of them to celebrate. So go ahead and take it away, Kang. Well, I thank you, Kang. It's me, Kang. One half of your tag team champions. That's right. Five and one at the show. Yet again, showing that I, along with my tag team partner, Joe, are the greatest tag team predictors in history. Of predicting the greatest tag team in the history of tag teams and we have defeated the Sigma Academy now moving on away from them Sebi Zach you put up a decent fight um, you know I'm not gonna shit on you or anything you, you did you did your best that's all I can ask of you and now it's time for us to move on from you go back to the end of the line uh, maybe you'll get better and we'll see you uh, when we see you but for now uh, bye bye because we have to look forward to Joe. No, not Joe. <laughs> Lou. I, I got the I got the names confused because I was looking at my at my booking sheet and I see Joe and Kang versus Lou and El Taquito. They of course lost the first Divs match to face us, which of course the Sigma Academy won. But they still do have a title match. And now that will be our next match, me and Joe the Golden Gods. Can we, yet again, pull out another victory? You're asking me, can we, the Golden Gods, Joe and Kang, defeat Lou? El Taquito, great predictor, I won't deny it. Can we defeat Lou? Go ahead and 
Even Lou has the correct answer to that. Even Lou. Go ahead and ask him. But, that's all I have to say on that for now. Uh, I am glad we won. It's expected of us at this point. But, it always feels good. And I imagine that whenever we do retain against Lou and Optiquito, it will feel just as good. But for now, we wait. We prepare. We train. And then, we predict. But, celebration time is over. It's time to get down to brass tacks. And brass tacks is this. Kang, take it away. Thanks, Kang. I'm taking it away. Brass tacks is this. The time for celebration on the Tag Team Championship match is over. But the time for celebration on the TV title match, well, it starts now. Mikey versus Lou. Lou, at this pay-per-view, after talking all that shit about how he's going to win the TV titles, he's going to win the tag titles, he's going to win both of those titles and challenge for the prediction champions and win that and be the triple crown champion. After all that shit, what record did Lou have at the show? Well, with a 2-3 and three record, that's right, 2-3, and three, because... Mikey and Lou decided to skip one of the matches. They just skipped it. Uh, so, I didn't count it for a win or a loss. So Lou goes 2-3. and three, Meaning, still, better than Sebi. Sorry, Sebi. Lou goes 2-3, and three, but what does Mikey do? Of course, Mikey only has five matches, too. But does he win one match? Two matches and ties? Three and wins? Four and destroys? Five and absolutely positively murders Lou? Well, congratulations, Lou. You are not dead, but you have been destroyed. Mikey, with a 4 and 1 record at the show, defeats Lou and retains his TV title. After one half of the Tag Team Champion Golden Gods have to celebrate, now <laughs> the Golden Gods nothing but fair, and you must hear the Golden God Mikey celebrate. Hey, if you don't want to hear the Golden God celebrate, just fucking beat us. Go ahead, Mike. Take it away. Hello, everybody. It's Mikey Cubs, your champion. Still. It's a me, Mikey. Yeah, yeah, me, Mikey. You may think it's Joe, but no. No, this is Mikey. And I'm coming up as one-year champion of the TV title come this Survivor Series. Can anybody beat me? No, because I put open challenges and only losers accept. Yeah, I only lose at one thing, poker. Congratulations yet again on another victory, Mikey. And, of course, you are almost one year in as TV champion. That's crazy. That is absolutely insane that we're going to have a champion last for over one year. Come Survivor Series, at least. Uh, we'll have to see if he loses it before then, will he? Well, I don't know. But it's time for our main event. And this one is a doozy. Because it is not what was advertised. You see, at the show, it was supposed to be mentor versus mentee. Franco challenging the Bidneth man for the prediction championship. Franco challenging him so he could entice Mikey to a rematch. Business man is accepting the challenge to put Franco in his place and remind him of what the culture is all about. But that match never happened. Because you see, as I was introducing Franco, I was interrupted. It turns out Franco had a wardrobe malfunction. And the challenger for that night was Darcy the Magnificent. And... Well, it was quite a weird match. He actually um, teleported the bit of man into a racist African doll. And, well, they predicted. And I can tell you who won. With a 4-2 and two record, Darcy the Magnificent loses to the bit of man with a 5-1 and one record at the show. Still, your KKPL prediction champion, and still... 
Representing the culture to the fullest. The Bitteth Man. Under any strain. Any surprise. It doesn't matter. Bitteth Man gets the job done. Tying me for the best record at the show. Bitteth Man. I feel like I've said this a lot recently. Um, but as I said with the Golden Gods, if you want to stop seeing them celebrate, beat them. Bitteth Man. Go ahead. And celebrate. Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's the business man. And I am here to yet again be very, very excited to represent the KKPL as your reigning pre Dixon's champion. Now, it did not go how I expected at TBD Presents Extreme Woes. You see, I thought I was there to put Franco in his place. And then, of course, this whole magic stick happens, and I have to face Darcy. But, I pulled it out. Doesn't matter who I'm facing, I pull the win out. Which, I was trying to put that mindset into Franco, but I wasn't able to do it personally. But I hope Franco was watching. I hope Franco saw, because I think I still accomplished my goal, Franco. I told you, it doesn't matter who you're facing. I found out who I was facing as I got put into a racist ass doll, and I still pulled out the victory. That's what matters. You gotta prepare. You gotta be on your toes for any situation, Franco. You have a one track mindset. You are focused on Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. When that makes you stinky, stinky, stinky. Franco, I'm talking to you right now. I understand this is my celebration problem, but I've done a, enough of those already. And I love doing them, don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But Franco, it didn't matter that I was facing you. It didn't matter if I faced Darcy. Doesn't matter if I faced Taquito. Doesn't matter if I faced Paul. Doesn't matter if I faced Kane. Doesn't matter if I faced Barack Hussein Obama. I am gonna get that win. And that's what separates me from you. That's what I was trying to prove. What matters only is the win, not about who is it against. It may make it sweeter, but a win is already so, so delectable. I hope you learned that lesson. And I hope we can move on. And now, your prediction champion, the Bitter Man. I'm out. Thank you for letting me represent you as the greatest champion in all of wrestling. Wow. Business Man has called out Franco yet again, trying to instill the mindset of winning inside of him. I wonder what Franco has to think about that. I wonder what Franco has to think about that entire whole thing with Darcy the Magnificent and, and him not getting a title match. I guess we'll have to hear from that. Well, not next week. <laughs> nice segue, Kang. Thanks, Kang. Because you see, next week, ladies and gentlemen, is the live predictions. Hopefully live. I'm, I, I, hopefully live. <laughs> predictions of Saudi Show. I was going to say the name of it, but I forgot. Crown Jewel, I believe to be it to be called. WWE Crown Jewel will be next Saturday. That's right. So, what we do is predict. Now you're wondering, what the hell is going on? We don't have any matches. Next week, you have no build. I know. Thanks, WWE. And thank you, YouTube, for giving me guideline strikes and not letting me upload. But, it's okay. Because I have figured out the perfect solution. Because you see, not only is Crown Jewel next week, Saturday, November 19th, is AEW Full Gear. And then Saturday, or Sunday, November 19th, I think. And then Saturday, November 26th, is Survivor Series. That is three pay-per-views in the span of one month. So, build schmild, I say. Next week, we will have predictions. And that predictions will contain 
the build for Survivor Series because I am smart, gentlemen and ladies and whatever you want to be. Next week will be a one match show. A number one contenders match winner faces the business man at Survivor Series. And that one match show will feature every single member of the roster that wants to compete. Because it is the greatest predictions Royal Rumble ever. One match all the predictions 10 people 12 people 8 people you thought it was going to go higher but we can't get more than 12 we'll find out I actually don't know because I'm announcing it to the world right now I cannot give you the entrance because like I said I had like one week to pull this together but next week you will see everyone that that, that comes to me and wishes to compete and the winner like I said will face Bidneth Man in the main event of Survivor Series for the KKPL Prediction Championship. So I imagine most of the roster is going to compete. Now also, that's out of the way. Next week you'll see that. Though I don't want to, you know, minimize that. But I will also say AEW Full Gear, two weeks after that or whatever, whatever the math is, will not have any title matches. It will continue the Kang Cup. I will announce more on that later, the matches, um, and also a third special match for the show. And then Survivor Series will be the, the classic Survivor Series. It'll just, you know, it'll be, that one's not going to be changed that much. It's going to have two predictions in between uh, during the build. But yeah, I understand it's difficult. Uh, I'm having a hard time with it too, because they fucked me, <laughs> making three pay-per-views in four weeks. But it's okay. Because I always can come up with a solution. I can always, always think on my toes. So, that is it for this week's episode of Smack Talk. And I shall see you next week for live, hopefully, predictions for Crown Jewel in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. With the greatest predictions. Royal Rumble. It's not a Royal Rumble. We're not going to have like people come out. But, you know, it's fun to call it Royal Rumble. Ever. Don't want to miss that. If you're a roster member or just a fan. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and all that stuff that I tell you to do every single week. And good night. Go to bed, bitch. T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U Thank you. Thank you. T-H-A-N-K-Y-O-U Thank you, guys.